Uh, joining me here on the second floor is quarterback Jacob Conover as well as kicker Cash Peterman. Guys, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having us. So we probably should have had Gunner stay. I mean, we had <laughs> Gunner. I mean, you guys would have been teammates. We could have had all three of you here. What's it's time. It's time. What's what's the story about Gunner that uh, that that you can tell? That's like a funny story about Gunner. Out of all three of us, he's the worst ping pong player. Oh, definitely. Sure. Okay, the worst ping pong. So does that mean that you guys are both really good at playing ping pong, or just of the three of you, he's in last place? I think we're both pretty good, but he's also pretty bad. So <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's best both worlds in that case. What's it, what's it like? You guys are obviously close and Gunner teammate. What's it like for all of you guys to be sharing the BYU experience together? That's got to be pretty cool. Mm. You know, it, it's pretty cool being at Chandler um, all those years and all of us going through the recruiting process and then all of us winding up here. It, it, it's pretty cool to fill out the dream. Yeah, I think there's been a few times, especially when we both got up here, that it was like five years ago this like plan was put in process, especially with missions and everything, that we stepped back and we were like, we're actually here. And it was just super cool to feel that. Well, and, and you guys were, you know, missionaries during the, the COVID years. Mm. And so you guys went through that as missionaries, kind of dealing with being stuck and isolated in your rooms and ultimately, you know, coming back earlier than what you had anticipated because of that. Take me through what that was like um, as missionaries out there to, to go through that? You know, um, all your, you're just focused on the work. And then all of a sudden, people are like, have you guys not heard of what, what's going on in the <laughs> real world? We're like, no. In the world, but not of the world. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then within, you know, months of hearing about the virus, boom, sent home. And it, it just the world flipped upside down, and it was just crazy. But obviously with the perspective of hope and just faith, uh, you know, miracles happen. And we both wound up here, and on our own timetable, it was, it was, it's been awesome. What was it like for you? Uh, right around the same process. I was about 22 months in, so I was nearing the end, so, but it was still a shock just to be, pack your bags, you're heading home, <laughs> even though we were nearing the end. What did it mean from a football perspective to be able to be back earlier than you anticipated and get a, get a jump start on things? I think it was a blessing in disguise, like of course, with all the hard things that went on. Got to come back, got to get more in shape, take off that missionary body. <laughs> That's always rough to get off of. But yeah, it was a little blessing in disguise. Got more work, got to get down, get ready for football. Well, and Jacob, I mean, we hear the stories about scout team, quarterback, and just how good you looked. How much, how much further do you think you are now because of the experience you had from last year? I mean, now I have one season under my belt. I'm coming in as a, as a veteran, you could say, not just this right. freshman right out of high school. And it's a, if I wasn't um, here last year, I don't think I'd be in the position I am today. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've heard A-Rod, Coach Roderick, he used the word swagger when he talked about you. You, 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 think, you think that fits? You, you got you a guy with swagger? I think I kind of have this, you know, a little bit of moxie, just a, a little different, hold myself up a little bit different. I wouldn't say a, a cocky swagger, but right. just some confidence. Is where does that come from? Has, has that always been a part of your of your DNA that you, in terms of your uh, belief in your abilities, has that always been with you, or is that something that you you had to learn? I think that's just kind of stuck with me throughout my whole life. Um, how can I be different? That's just a part of my game. That's I love the game so much that it's just become a part of me. So we we have. Both of you guys are on social media and um, quite entertaining, by the way. Um, your nickname is Thunderfoot, is that correct? Is it? I'll take it. Uh, that's what I'm hearing. That's, whatever that's, you want. That, that is what I'm, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, so uh, do, do you, first of all, do you like that nickname? I'm fine with that nickname. So, like, so yeah. like, if that's stuck, you would be perfectly fine I'm with fine Thunderfoot. With it. You can call me that. I usually just get cash money or something okay. like that or the kicker or whatever. I'll take Thunderfoot any day. See, that's what I was going to ask. How much, how many references to cash and money do you get on a daily basis because it's, of the name? The list keeps going. It's endless. More people get creative. I'll hear different things. Do you like, do you like the name Cash? Oh, I love it. I love it. It's a good time. Do you have any nicknames, by the way? Uh, Say it. I don't know. The smooth I, operator is one he won't say. <laughs> so where is that coming from? Um, I've always idolized or just looked over Joe Montana. And people labeled him as a smooth operator because he's cool, calm, and collective under pressure. And that's what I tell people who I, I they ask me what I label my game as, and I say the smooth operator. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Well, let's focus on the quarterbacks for right now. Uh, I've, I've had the chance already today to talk with Jaron, and we just got done talking with Baylor. So now I'm going to ask you the exact same question I asked him. What, what is your approach to this quarterback competition? Training every day as if I'm the guy. Because I know September 4th is going to come quick. Every rep is going to matter. And whoever uh, A-Rod pulls the trigger on, Coach Kalani and A-Rod pull the trigger on, they better be ready to go. What do you think is your greatest aspect that you bring to that position? That I'm a winner. I think coming from high school at a, at a place where winning is an expectation, that needs to be the same thing here at BYU, that it's an expectation to win, just a winning attitude. And I'm excited to do that, to, to be consistent, a consistent winner, and just excited to love the game. And, and the, I, know, I know you guys have talked about the fact that, you know, the, the room is good. It's, it's one of those where everybody has everybody's back. Obviously, everybody wants to be the starter. Right. But that probably has to be helpful that it's not, it's not being done in a vindictive way, that everybody has everybody's back. No, you're 100% right. Um, it has to be a healthy quarterback room. If it's not, if there's no relationships, it's very toxic. It's not healthy. Um, but there are relationships and bonds that will last forever in this quarterback room, and we're all supportive of one another. Obviously, like you said, there's a competition, and everyone's super competitive, but we're all super supportive of one another. Cash, I mentioned the, the social media aspect, and your 61-yard your field goal uh, that you posted on social media is quite impressive. Uh, what, what's, what's the longest field goal that you've ever kicked? In practice, I had a 74. Uh, 74? A few weeks ago, yeah. Oh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. 74. Yeah. All right. So, so if you, where are you, if the coach, if, if you're going to, if you're going to get in the game and the coach says, what are you comfortable with? What's the number, what's the yard line you're giving the coach? <laughs> I'd say once you cross half field, I'm feeling comfortable. Odd thing for me is I've, I tend to back up pretty fast in, um, in practices, which isn't a good thing. I need to learn from Jake and stay in there, right. and get more consistent. But I'm more comfortable from 50 to 60 than I am from 40 to 30 right now. So 60, once you cross that midfield line, I'm ready to go. Yeah. So obviously with Jake and, and Ryan on the roster, what have the coaches talked to you in terms of what they want to see from you this year? What they want to see from me is, of course, they love competition. I'm here to push Jake to be better, but we definitely have one of the best special teams room in the nation by far. Ryan's an NFL kicker. Uh, Ryan's an NFL punter. Jake is definitely an NFL kicker, and I'm trying to follow that dream as well and be an NFL kicker as well. So we're all pushing each other, all competing, but it's definitely hard to compete with the guy that just came off of a perfect season. Right. Yeah. Is it still weird to see Zach, like, I was asking Gunner and, and Baylor this to see that, you know, the leading sports center. And like, how surreal is that for you guys? It's pretty funny. I, I kind of tell people I'm like a 20 year old freshman and he's a 21 year old millionaire. <laughs> kind of just, he's like a month older than I am and we're at completely two different stages of our life. It, it's, it's awesome though. I'm happy for him. So, what, uh, what has you both excited about the upcoming season? What, what's, what are you guys focusing on right now? Mm, I'd probably say fans, fans in the stadium to travel around. Vegas, especially the Death Star, that's probably my favorite thing to go. <laughs> uh, this season has so much excitement around it. Just There's just this excitement around this whole season. Everyone's so excited to be back and playing the full experience of football. Well, and, and we realize, everyone realizes that one year to the next, I mean, certainly you, you want to build things off of, but every year is its own year. Right. But in terms of what we saw from the offense last year, knowing even though a lot of production left, how much production is still here and how much production has come into the program, I have to imagine that as a quarterback, you know, you step into this and it's like, we can hit the ground running, literally. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, we're getting jitty. We're just ready to rock and roll. And, you know, Coach A-Rod is super excited. Just We talk about it every day. He's like, I'm just so excited to play football again. Like, it's it needs to get here faster. Um, and just with so many weapons, so many opportunities, just... It's getting everyone just you know, sleepless at night sometimes because your dreams are just going wild. One of the cool things about Media Day this year is several of your teammates and now you guys have started uh, nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And this is really, really cool. You guys have a nonprofit called Helmets for Hope. Why don't you guys take a second and explain exactly what that is? Yeah, basically Helmets for Hope started. I uh, found a helmet at Goodwill, thought I'd make it snazzy, make it look all good, and I came up with the chrome, all chrome blue helmet, and that actually started a little 
a little ruckus at first. It went a little big. Everyone thought <laughs> BYU was getting chrome helmets. But, I do remember that. Yeah, she, yes, yeah. I do remember A little remember bit. <laughs> and um, yeah, from there on, uh, we had extra time. Love to do it. And then Billy came up for the Bill for Life. Billy said, Nixon. Billy Nixon, yeah. Yep. And um, kind of opened a window, opened an opportunity that we saw and wanted to take advantage of and saw ways that we can help underprivileged kids, underprivileged athletes that are here in Utah and get them in the sport and help them in ways we can't right now. What's, what's the goal here? I mean, what's, what do you think is possible with this nonprofit? Because this is such an unbelievable thing. This is great. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what's, what's the end goal here? I'd say there's no limit right now. We'd love to take it all the way through, all the way through college football. We don't want to just keep it here in Utah. We, we want to spread it, even go up to the University of Utah. Uh, I have some friends out in Oregon. We talked to their equipment coordinator. And even once we both make it to the NFL or have connections in there, even take it to that next level as well and just help as many people as possible while doing so. Yeah, what does it mean to you guys to be able to have this opportunity to even do this? Because let's, let's be honest, there are not a lot of guys at your age that are thinking about nonprofits. And so the fact that you guys have done this, first and foremost, you deserve congratulations for, for coming up with the idea and even you know, having this idea. But you know, what, what does it mean to you guys to be able to have this opportunity? I think it really embodies, um, you know, when BYU says the world is our campus, it gives us the opportunity to connect with the world and give back. Um, this Built for Life program is helping us as athletes change our lives on and off the field. And to be able to start even a nonprofit is just really opening our gateway to connect with more and more people and give back because we've been given so much during our life. So we've actually got some of the helmets over here. Can we have somebody just maybe, maybe hand awesome those? In. Let's, let's show off some of these helmets. I love that helmet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That yeah, helmet so is. We'll yeah. toss you that. Okay, one. I'm gonna get this one. There I'm gonna go. get this one. Oh, this is my I'm favorite the one pink. right here. These, these are. <laughs> we got a little bit of everything. This is, yeah, this is pretty one? cool. I, if, 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 if people are interested in getting more information, what's 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 something they can do to maybe help get involved? So right now, all the information is on my Instagram, Cash underscore Peterman. That's where I make new helmets. I'll post them, and where this one has already been given away, and I'm giving this one away this weekend. Um, yeah, right now we're giving them away, but as the company starts developing the nonprofit, uh, our website should be up in the next few weeks. Um, we'll be selling the helmets so that we can get money to those people who actually need it. And more styles will come out. We take, we take recommendations from everyone. It'll get crazy, it'll get wild, and we'll see where we can go. So just to make sure people, this isn't, you know, donating helmets or this is people that maybe have helmets that need to be fixed up you guys are fixing them up you know making them look super cool like this and then you're selling these off and using the money for underprivileged you know charities things like that it's yeah it's to help underprivileged people that way yeah so this is this is really really cool um, and and again you guys deserve to be uh, patted on the back for for coming up with something like this guys Thank you so much for, for doing this, for sharing your nonprofit and talking some football. We're like, football's gonna be here before we know it. It's, we, we think, that's oh, well, it's, you know, we're just in June and that's in August. It's gonna be here before we know it. I, I can't, like, as a media member and as a fan, I'm excited. I can't even imagine as, as oh, players yeah. how excited you guys are. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank, thank you. you.